Professor Pradeep Shah is the director of School of Psychiatry, IPJMER, Kolkata. Very good, very good afternoon to all of you, respected chairpersons, my director, Professor Pradeep Mitro, and our very close and very much related to the government of West Bengal Department of Health, Professor Tridhi Energy, and my colleagues, Professor Anand, Dr. Shuchandan. So, basically, I'm a neuropsychiatrist. So that's why my topics is related to the neuroprotection against cerebral palsy, preferably in preterm infant, those who are having cerebral palsy. So the question is, still today, the, our previous speaker has mentioned that the incidence of prevalence of cerebral palsy is getting, is more or less the same as we are getting in the last 50 or 100 years. So I will stick to the time and stick to the point that how to protect the cerebral palsy as because it is the manifestation related to the neurology and the psychiatry. And more specifically, we say it is related to the brain. So see, the, all we people know is that prevention is better than cure. So the prevention of preterm birth, if you want to prevent the cerebral palsy, and that is a very significant challenge till today in the 21st century. And you all know that damage to the immature brain is the central concern. And what is the damage? There is very two specific, periventricular hemorrhage or intraventricular hemorrhage is one of the specific concern during intraventricular life that can induce cerebral palsy or any dyspastic conditions or motor skill dysfunctions in the futures. That periventricular leukomalacias also has some contributed leading to the disease process after birth or cerebral palsy as because these two, three things, periventricular leukomalacia and periventricular interventricular hemorrhage leads to affects the pyramidal tracts that mainly involving the lower extremities. As you say, the most of the cerebral palsy having the, the walking in a scissors kit. Like a scissors, they are moving like this, not like us. So this affects mainly the pyramidal tracts of involving the lower extremities. And the next is, the, what is the periventricular hemorrhage and what is the periventricular leukomalacia and how does it induces the causes and affecting the cerebral palsy. So there is a vascular bed of germinal matrix that is intrauterine up to 24 to 36 weeks in gestational period and it is burst easily if the boy is born before the 32 weeks. It may be 24 weeks, it may be 26 weeks, it may be 30 weeks, but there is a every chance of the burst of the germinal matrix, that is a vascular bed, which is usually disappears after 32 weeks. So our target is, it should be gestational intrauterine up to 32 weeks. By virtue of that, we can protect the manifestation of cerebral palsy. And this prenatal and postpartal fluctuation leads to the rupture of the blood vessels. If the boy, we, sir was mentioning, Professor K. Kirai, that it is extremely low birth weight, or low birth weight, still today, the science has developed, the madam is there, the many people have survived. But after 20, 30 years before, we are not in a position that 1,000 grams birth weight is not in a position to survive. But till today, it is survived. And the periventricular leukomalacia, that means the damage of the, the brain tissues related to the pyramid tracts around the corpus callosum and internal capsule, so that basic, specifically damage to radiation occipitalis of the lateral ventricles and adjacent to the white matter and related to, adjacent to the foramen monroe. That leads to, if you go for the CT scan of that baby, you will see only the area some hemorrhage and the lateral ventricles are dilated. So the periventricular hemorrhage at periventricular leukomalacia 
There is a one landmark studies in 2009 by the Wu and Colford, and they have meta analysis of the 26 previous studies, and they found and they got some correlation between cardioamnionitis and cerebral palsy. There's another areas. In 2010, another meta analysis confirmed this, this correlation. And the more efforts are being made to detect in most of the cases of the pregnancy by the obstetrician or the family physician who are handling the pregnancy, that is there any ascending intrauterine infection in early pregnancy? As because if you can prevent the early intrauterine So the treatment, as because we know that the all obstetrician, all family physicians, all the doctors know that there is a every chance of urinary tract infection which can induce the ascending infection to the intrauterine. The treatment of urinary tract infections or keep in our minds when treating or the mother attending the antenatal clinics, the UTI includes early diagnosis and early administration of antibodies which decreases the rate of pattern of delivery and by virtue that we can prevent the impending the preterm delivery and by virtue that we can prevent the future cerebral palsy. And the next is the how to prevent the preterm birth and ascending intrauterine infections. So you see, the affecting the most infants, those are preterm delivery. And it can be avoided by prevention of preterm births by daily doses of 200 milligram progesterone. As you know that, it is really the, mainly the, related to the reproductive systems. But if you assume there is a possibility of preterm delivery or it is imminent, then you can use the progesterone as because it has some properties in neuroprotective, it has some properties in antibiotics. So weekly, and Sir has mentioned that cervical circles in case of history of preterm births in mothers. The many mothers are there with a past history of preterm birth. In that cases, you have to be more cautious, whether you are obstetrics or family physicians, handling the antenatal mothers. So without any hesitation, you can suggest the cervical surplus by virtue that in many cases you can prevent the preterm birth. A dependent position to prevent the preterm birth, you can handle the brain hemorrhage, what I mentioned earlier, and that brain hemorrhage can induce cerebral palsy in futures. Progesterone has shown to have anti-inflammatory properties in animal many studies and modulating influences on gene activation also. I'm not going into details about the gene, but this sir has just mentioned the magnesium. But if you are in a position to protect the neurology, those are coming, there is a activated cerebral ischemia. If you feel, then there is a role of magnesium is eminent. And it can induce the excitotoxic amino acid, there is a presynaptically glutamate, and that accumulates. And finally, the acts on an methyl d aspartic receptors to the brains, and that leads to the calcium influx intra or extracellular regions, and that calcium will be overloaded, and that leads to the cell damage. And that cell damage can induce cerebral palsy. So you can prevent the cell damage, you can prevent the cerebral palsy. So the magnesium as a whole prevents this, leading to reduction of the chances of the brain insult in case of preterm birth. And it not only decreases the cerebral convections into uterine, it also acts as a vasodilator. And all the Guinean obstetrics people know that it is anti-eclamptic and anti-tocolysis. So applying magnesium in preterm babies, it helps in neuroprotection, can protect cerebral palsy also. And there is, as Sarah has mentioned, only the BEAM studies. So what is BEAM studies? So there is a 2000, there is a landmark studies there is a beneficial effects of antenatal magnesium. It definitely, the studies has established that it's a lower rate of the infantal cerebral palsy, 1.9 to 3.9%. And the another review by the question of the Czechoslovakia, he found and he told that, that other funding findings by the BEAM studies is significant and significant reduction in the incidence of infantile cerebral palsy if you apply the magnesium in due time in all cases of the preterm deliveries whether it is a extremely low birth weight or low birth weight 
or the gestation period is 30 weeks, 24 weeks, or 28 weeks. So, the, but you have to some precaution you have to maintain. As because we know all these things, the magnesium can induce the maternal mortality is at risk. That can induce, in many cases, the cardiac or pulmonary arrest. And in few cases, magnesium sulfate can induce the postpartum hemorrhage also. But what are the benefits of getting for the magnesium to prevent the brain insult? Ultimately, this, the Australian, the O and his associates established that it can prevent at least 40% of the even in preterm births. And if you are able to prevent the preterm births, you can prevent the cerebral palsy. And that reduces infantile cerebral palsy. And what we are, we are getting that gross motor skill dysfunctions. We have seen one of the ladies' pictures. I think it is not cerebral palsy. It, is, it might be gross motor skill dysfunctions. And Sir Kekera has mentioned the delayed clamping. But how it attributed to prevent the preterm birth and prevent the cerebral palsy? If you clamped after one minute, during my house job, what we used to do? Immediately after birth, we are clamping the umbilical cord. So if you clamp after one minute, the 30% reduction in the chance of brain hemorrhage and brain sepsis. And if you clamp immediately after birth, there is a 77% of chances of brain hemorrhage, more specifically in all cases of preterm birth. The next is the how the delayed clamping of the umbilical cord is very simple things. During delivery, you just wait for one minute and clamp the umbilical. Or many people are milking. So you're milking three, four, five, five times. Somebody is milking for one time. Somebody is milking seven times. So you restrict yourself to four times. So the similar effects have been seen by other interventions by a very simple method such as repeated milking of the umbilical cord by minimum four times. That can decrease the pediventricular interventricular hemorrhage or pediventricular The stem cells also have some roles. The mesenchymal stem cells being considered, and this can be grown from embryonic tissue, such as it is not available everywhere in Calcutta also, the placenta, umbilical cord, stroma, water, and jelly. And it, animal studies have been shown that in preterm sheep fetuses have shown considerable success. So stem cells have, if the person is have eminent preterm delivery and they can develop the, the cerebral palsy, in that case, the stem cells and the mesenchymal cells can be used as because it migrated in the damaged area and they can regenerate and they can fulfill some functions which is lost by this hemorrhage. And even if they roll up estradiol and progesterone, they play a critical role in reproductive systems. In addition to this, neuroprotective and treated in all cases, the preterm baths, progesterone have some definite roles as because it reduces post ischemic cellular edema by maintaining the blood brain barrier integrity. Everybody knows that the role of broadband barrier. If you induce the progesterone estradiol and they can inhibit the post ischemic apoptosis, there is a brain tissue loss. So that it is uh, in a nutshell how to protect the neuroprotection in preterm babies. Thank you for listening. Thank you.